We welcome you into Newsmax TV's live coverage of the New Hampshire primary. You are looking live in turn at the scene at Donald Trump headquarters in Manchester, New Hampshire. The Republican frontrunner still running out front, but we'll see if that holds up throughout the evening. Uh, we welcome you into this coverage. I'm J.D. Hayworth. As we open this coverage tonight, we note that all polling places in New Hampshire were supposed to be closed at this hour. However, the state attorney general made a special ruling specific to Mary Mac telling the moderator, that is in essence the de facto elections commissioner in that locality, that it is up to her discretion. We heard there was a two mile long traffic jam of cars trying to get to polling places in Merrimack, New Hampshire this afternoon and evening. And so the polls remain open what's expected to be record turnout in the Granite State. We will monitor first the early numbers from what is expected to be a rambunctious Republican race. And here it is, only 2% of precincts reporting. Donald Trump with better than a 2-1 to one lead, 34% to John Kasich's 15%, then Jeb Bush at 11%, Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio nodded at 10%. Chris Christie with 9%. Carly Fiorina excluded from ABC's Saturday night debate with 5%. And Dr. Ben Carson with 2% of the vote in 2% of the reporting precincts. On the Democratic side, a 10-point lead for Bernie Sanders, 54 to 44%, with 3% of Democrat precincts reporting. Joining me here at the Anchor Desk, noted political scholar, Newsmax TV political analyst, and presidential strategist Dick Morris. Dick, uh, we've seen very early numbers, and I guess it's too early to really establish a trend. But the interesting thing about New Hampshire the number of undeclared voters who can go in and declare a party preference today. Right. Do you expect them to be the key to victory in both parties tonight? Well, they can't be the key to victory in both parties because they'll vote in one primary or the other. And if they divide evenly, they won't have as big an impact on either one. Um, I think that in the uh, Republican primary, they would tend to go for John Kasich, who is sort of the Democratic Party's favorite Republican. <laughs> Uh, whereas in the Republican, in the Democratic primary, they would undoubtedly go for Sanders. Uh, I think that the bulk of them are going to vote in the Democratic primary because I think the excitement of Bernie Sanders overtaking Hillary Clinton is probably irresistible to those voters. John Kasich was obviously hoping to get a big chunk of those undeclared voters. In fact, he joked over the weekend that he really ought to be running in the Democrat primary. He has a lot of the McCain team from 2000 advising him. And I guess in retrospect, that was the key to the McCain victory in 2000 over uh, George W. Bush, was it not? It was, and it deceived the country because uh, when McCain beat Bush in New Hampshire, uh, everybody assumed that McCain would win throughout. And then in South Carolina, Bush reacquainted voters with reality. And it turned out that most of the McCain voters were not Republicans, but were independents. Now, back then, about a third of the states permitted an independent vote in either primary. Now that's eliminated. New Hampshire is one of the only ones that does. It is interesting to look at the science of polling, and we can tell you that now, uh, according to uh, projections based on exit numbers, CNN, Fox, and ABC all report Donald Trump, the winner of the Republican primary, Bernie Sanders, the winner of the Democratic primary. Dick, we're going to have some speculation in the days to come so early out of the gate with Merrimack and other municipalities, perhaps still with the ballots, uh, still having ballots cast. But that is what we are hearing from three other broadcast networks. Let well, me I would worry that the voters would turn around and go home. But when you see the photos of the traffic jams, they can't. They can't go home, might it's as like, well go vote. It's like being in the fast uh, auto lane at McDonald's. You can't turn around. <laughs> yeah. you Once you're there, your sandwich. well, <laughs> we're going to order up, not so much drive-by, but from our good friends in the Big Apple, two of our colleagues who join us tonight from Newsmax New York. We welcome in Newsmax TV host Steve Malsberg, host of the eponymously named Steve Malsberg Show, which you just saw prior to this program. And also from Newsmax New York, the senior political contributor for Forbes.com, Rick Unger. Steve, first to you. We are already getting network projections that Trump 
is victorious. What does that mean to his campaign? What does it mean to the country? Yeah, well, yeah, you could add CBS to that list of networks that have predicted Trump and Sanders. It's really no surprise. It would have been a shock and it would have been a, a, a real... Uh, uh, you know, a, a wake up call to Donald Trump if uh, he did not win. It looks like he's going to win and win handily. Uh, one of the exit polls I saw showed that 36 percent of independent uh, voters on the Republican side went for Donald Trump and the next closest was 17 for Kasich. So, uh, you know, I, I think it, it, it says that uh, it's going to be very hard to stop Donald Trump. He's going to go into South Carolina. He's going to win there. He's going to go to Vegas. He's going to win there. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think as long as the other candidates who are now all bunched up, and I'm talking about the so-called establishment candidates, although I don't put Rubio in that uh, establishment category, Rubio, Kasich, uh, Bush, Christie, as long as they stay in, they'll continue to split uh, that, that vote, that so-called establishment vote, making it all the more uh, likely that Trump wins uh, wherever he goes. Uh, Rick Unger, you are our designated Democrat in this panel discussion tonight. <laughs> Sanders with a 10-point lead, projected to be the Democrat victor. Uh, what does that mean to his campaign? Or perhaps more importantly, what does it mean to Team Hillary? Well, look, I mean, this is obviously no great surprise on either side. I think at this point, what we're all looking for on the Democratic side is what is Sanders' uh, breadth of victory? Does it stay double digits? If it does, it's what we expected. If somehow Hillary cut into that to get it lower than that, that would be the surprise. I have a feeling it's not going to happen that way. In terms of what it means going forward, it's all about South Carolina. Sanders is now going to make a very concerted effort. He's meeting with Al Sharpton tomorrow to try and cut into that African-American vote that Hillary is so dependent on as she begins to make the Southern swing. If Sanders can succeed in that regard, which I seriously question if he will, but if he can, then you start to see a very hard fought race down the road with nobody able to predict what will happen. Uh, Dick Morris, let me turn to you. We just heard Rick mention that it'll be uh, Al Sharpton sitting down with Bernie Sanders in the morning. In the morning in New Hampshire, will Hillary invite her campaign team in and some people at breakfast leave no longer being part of that campaign yeah, team? I, would, I wouldn't bet on the thin crowd meeting at lunch. Uh, but uh, let me go back to what Steve and, um, and uh, Unger both said. Um, about the Republican primary, this field will narrow down to a two-way or at most three-way contest inevitably, inexorably, on March 1st. Because on March 1st, you have a threshold of 20% in most states, 15 in others, where if, unless you get above that, you don't get any delegates. Now, in New Hampshire tonight, there is a threshold of 10%. So if anybody gets less than 10, they're not getting any delegates. Uh, but it's not been widely publicized, but it will be after for the March 1st primary. And therefore, you can't have the five candidates bunched because they won't get 10 percent, either of them. And de facto, the top two are the runoff. So here is what is at stake tonight in the Republican Party? The battle for second place and really the battle for double digits. Yeah. What it is really is the separation, the battle for second place. And if we assume that that's Cruz, which we don't know, uh, then the separation between second and third and third and fourth and fifth. And um, th that'll determine if you've chosen a winner of the establishment lane now. And let me go back to the uh, Democratic primary. South Carolina is atypical in that 50 percent of the vote is cast by African Americans. Nationally in the Democratic primary, a quarter is cast by African Americans. The general election, 12 percent is. But a quarter, 25 percent of the Democratic primary vote is black. So when you look forward to the Super Tuesday states, while it's true that South Carolina will basically be a black primary, and you're right that unless Sanders can make inroads that I doubt he can with the black community, um, Hillary will walk away with that. But on March 1st, when you have about a third of the delegates selected, only about 20 percent of that third comes from Alabama, Georgia, or Virginia, the only three states with more than 20% black population. Understood. The other states either have only 10 or less than 10. And in those states, the black vote won't matter that much. Well, let, let's talk about, in terms of the numbers we are seeing tonight, 
And uh, let me go to my colleague, Steve Malsberg in New York at Newsmax New York. Steve, it was interesting, the expectation games a week ago with Marco Rubio uh, somehow transmogrifying that third place finish into an establishment victory. Then you had Rubio in the debate Saturday night where he was, uh, he was tagged with the line, robotic Rubio. Do you expect him to fall in the vote, vote totals tonight? Who do you expect, Steve, to win this battle for second place in the Republican primary? Well, I think, I think there, there's little doubt, and there was little doubt going in that it was going to be John Kasich. I mean, here's a guy who got endorsed by the uh, New York Times <laughs> and uh, was, was happy with it. Uh, he resonates up there. He, uh, he's, you know, they're his kind of Republican. Uh, not, not as much as Trump, apparently, but I, 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 I'm not surprised that Kasich will, will shine here. I don't think Kasich will shine in too many other places, to be honest with you, with, uh, uh, with that kind of glowing endorsement from the Times. And, and, and quite honestly, the policies and, the, and his whole attitude. Um, uh, and, and by the way, I think it's interesting that at least early on, uh, you know, Mr. Christie, who I think is the one who's fixated on the same thing over and over and over again, and not Rubio, uh, he isn't doing anything tonight so far. So uh, I'm glad about that. Let me turn to Rick Unger, uh, because you mentioned how, um, how Kasich might do well with independence. But as, as we're looking at this, Rick, and I know early on in the Trump campaign, before it became the phenomenon it turned out to be, uh, you were somewhat skeptical of Trump's appeal. And as we look live at his headquarters, what about Trump appealing to the, the undeclared, the independent voters there in the Granite State? And will that continue nationally? Well, we'll see. You know, I certainly was skeptical. I think I was in pretty good company in that regard. He surprised me. We're we're having, we're having a little trouble with uh, Rick's audio. We'll try to fix that. Rick, while we're waiting for you, let me go to Dick Morris here at the anchor desk. The appeal of Donald Trump to independent voters, is it real? Oh, yeah, I think it's very real, and, and not just independent voters, but first-time voters. Uh, when people look at the political map, they say Trump can't win because he's too extreme. And even the exit poll, even the polls say that uh, Trump fails to beat Hillary. But those polls are of likely voters. And Trump has the capacity to expand the electorate dramatically and bring in a whole lot of new voters that haven't voted before. Now, in Iowa, that was not enough to change the result. Here, it may well have been. But go back to the Republican primary. If Kasich finishes second, which at the moment he's running second, I think that's kind of a non-result. Because I think Steve is completely accurate. He's a one-state candidate. Uh, back in the days when independents could vote in either primary, you had the chance of a guy like McCain winning the nomination uh, by running the states with independents and getting that. Back in 2000, that was his strategy. By 08, he'd learned to run as a Republican. But um, I don't see that happening now because the laws have changed to make New Hampshire atypical.